walls of heaven is taking up your records and you can go to heaven as you like. Paddy Farm, Beckway. My great grandfather, he was a whaler, that whale on the Yankee whaling ship. My grandfather also, whale on the Yankee whaling ship. Then my father, he was a whaler. So I always tell myself, when I grow up, I want to be a whaler also. I met Eustace some 20 years ago on the tiny island of Bekwe in the Southeast Caribbean. He was a teenager hoping to realize his childhood ambition and find a position on the whaling crew with this man, Chief Harpooner, at Neil Oliver. When I harpoon a whale, from the time I harpoon a whale, I turn like a lion. I don't want nobody to talk to me. I mean that as a fighter, the whale can kill me any time, so I don't study whether I have to die or not. I mean I must kill the whale. And I, I t telling them to do this in your boat and do that, and all the time I want to be, have the boat right up to the whale. And I feel that nobody mustn't tell me nothing, don't tell me I can't do this, don't tell me I can't do that. I mean it, it happened and I must kill it. Whaling here started in the mid-1800s, when the Yankee whalers enlisted and trained the talented seamen of Beckway. One of them bought two boats from the Yankee whalers and started a fishery here in Friendship Bay. To the consternation of many, Atneal and Eustace, along with a dozen or so other resolute men, plied the 19th century trade of their forefathers into the 21st century. In the last 25 years, the Beckway whalers have landed on average one humpback whale per year. To the delight of the whalers' families and friends hungry for sustenance, the drama of the chase at sea unfolds right in front of them. And the whalers, struggling to maintain a unique identity, hear their neighbors cheering them on. The whalers maintain a deep reverence for nature, as well as a direct connection to their survival. A connection that we, in the modern world, sometimes forget. 